Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pause and Effect, a show about games by gamers for nerd enthusiasts everywhere. If you're new to the program, on this podcast, we talk about games. I pick one game a week, and we talk about our initial impressions, likes, dislikes, and biggest takeaways from the game, positive or negative. If you like what you hear, please consider sharing the podcast everywhere you can. If you would like to talk on the program or suggest an idea for an episode, please send an email to pauseandeffectcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's pauseandeffectcast at gmail.com, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Also, spoilers will happen. You have been warned. With that being said, I'm your host, CJ, and joining me this week are my good friends Kat and Molly. How's everyone doing? Hey. Hey, how's it going? Doing well. How about yourselves? Good. Oh yeah, hanging in there. Glad to hear it. I know you two are Fire Emblem enthusiasts in your own right, so I'm happy that you guys are able to make it out today. Keep in mind, I will also do future episodes that cover some of the other games in the series. I just don't have set dates for those. All right, kicking things off, this week we are talking about Fire Emblem Awakening. What are everyone's general thoughts and impressions when thinking back on your experiences with the game? Uh, it's like a religious experience. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's accurate. <laughs> it, I think I had played some of the Fire Emblem titles prior to Awakening, none of which had really grabbed my attention in the same way that Awakening did. And I remember basically sitting down and not putting it down. As soon as yeah. I had it, I, I had to see where it was going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like binging a show or a book or something. The first time I played it was actually the demo when the demo came out. And it was like an emotional challenge <laughs> to not have the entire game in my hands all at once. <laughs> <laughs> I could totally feel that. Oh, I'm, I'm a little jelly that you got the, <laughs> the demo. Yeah. Oh, oh it was so gosh. fun. <laughs> I, man, I was hyped up on that demo for like fucking weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember like being playing the demo a bunch of times and like, oh, I can't put this down. This is amazing. And then it's like, oh, you only have like 30 times to play it. And yeah. I'm like, oh, what is that? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, wow. Man, they put real uh, heavy <laughs> limitations on that. Jeez. Oh, yeah. And that seems to have become the standard for a lot of games lately, too. Like, all of the uh, Monster Hunter demos that have come out lately, all of the... Uh... Oh, it was the uh, Resident Evil Village demo before that game came out. You could only play it a certain number of times, and that was it. Huh. Okay. I'm actually... Because I know, like, when PT and the like came out, if I remember correctly, you could play it as many times as you wanted, just because there were actual bugs in it that were preventing players from getting to the end. But, oh. uh... <laughs> And yeah. now if you're able to find a PS4 on eBay with PT loaded into it, you're a lucky mm -hmm. person. Yes, you are, because you can't get it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sad. Okay, so what would you both say that you liked most about the game? I think for me it was the it was the characters. Especially like knowing with previous Fire Emblem games, you only, if I recall correctly, in the English versions, you were only ever able to play as like a insert yourself type character once, and that was with the original quote unquote Fire Emblem with uh Ella Wood and all of them. So with creating Robin and being able to like design the character and really feel like you were creating an immersive part of yourself inside of this game that part just really stuck out to me and then as you started meeting characters you started you know with this mystery of not really knowing you know who you really were and really who anybody else was but that fish out of water scenario worked really really well and just immersed you in this kind of wonderful group of people all of whom had their own motivations they all had their own personalities unfortunately several were very much tropes but i would say fire emblem at least did try to kind of work around some of those tropes or at least leaned into them in a way that felt like that was just who the character was. Right. It like it it took tropes but gave them like unique flavor mm -hmm. and kind of make you enjoy the trope again. Yeah. It was new life almost, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Totally get it. Yeah, I think for me it's definitely like the characters were well written, although some of them were indeed tropes, like you just said, Kat. I will also say the gameplay also really stands out because it's the first game to introduce the uh, pair up system. Mm -hmm. It's the first first game yeah. to uh, really have such a wide casting net of supports for every single cast member, save for a couple, like the ones that you get closer to the end of the game, like Seri, like Basilio, like Flavia, mm -hmm. where their only supports are with your avatar character, and that's about it. But it also did really revamp the uh, skill system, which previously had been introduced in games like Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn, Thracia 776, 
Mm -hmm. They had their own like different unique flares to them, but I dare say that it was Awakening that created the system and refined it to how it currently stands today. Yeah, absolutely. It was like really innovative while still holding true to like their classic concept. Just like such a polished game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it really is. Um, it's, now, oh, sorry, CJ, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, now with this game being the game that it became, I have to ask, how many times have you played the game through and who did you choose for your avatar's romance <laughs> oh, option? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um... <laughs> I've probably played it like four or five yeah. times. The first time, because I'm a basic <laughs> bitch, definitely. Crom. Crom, obviously. Yep. He's a beautiful boy. <laughs> also one of the most broken if you know what you're doing. Yeah, honestly, for yeah. real. <laughs> like, getting, at some point, even just the first playthrough, I was just like, I literally cannot play Crom anymore. I just like, I won't select him when I'm doing a mission and stuff like that if I can. Because I could just like do the entire map with him <laughs> between him and robin Boring. yeah I mean, you have your avatar on the field on one side you'd have crom on the other and just they would meet in the middle and everything between them would just die exactly and i'm like this is how it should be but at the same time i'd like to use the you know 12 bajillion other characters you gave me right see how right. they work you know yeah i definitely crom <laughs> was the was the first romance option i actually don't remember who i romanced after that because i've tried playing both the male and the female tacticians and i know obviously you can only one of the unfortunate bits and i know we'll be getting into this later you couldn't romance same same sex right characters Ooh. which i am very glad they fixed in three which houses. is outrageous <laughs> considering uh -huh. Sully is definitely a raging <laughs> lesbian <laughs> Well, not convinced I'm otherwise. also convinced Robin is bi regardless of like you know oh, yeah. like, there's there's so many things that are being pointed out in the game in terms of dialogue that you go you can't read this any other way right exactly <laughs> like, I don't know if the because they obviously like set it up for the other sex right. version of the character or whatever and it's just like it would be so much easier on your on yourself <laughs> as you're writing the game if you just let him be right. bi like, just let them you can have canonical <laughs> bisexual characters that's totally fine guys like we encourage it Thumbs up. And I'm, I'm glad that they did do a little bit more. Right. We beg. <laughs> yeah, the fan community out there definitely has put their uh, opinion out there on that of, please, for the love of God, please do this. And I'm glad to see that that like, changed, especially in Fates did not do a good job of it, but Three Houses at least tried to some extent. Yeah, they, they put a foot forward. It wasn't No, their best it tripped foot. real bad. <laughs> but it was okay. <laughs> it tripped real bad. They, they, I, I will give them a single kudos for trying but yeah there there was certainly enough there that it was like oh you don't know how to write this kind of character at all you're trying but you needed to bring on somebody else who knows how to write these types of characters you know with the foot forward they put in fates they were like emulating daniel radcliffe from that, that one episode of saturday night live going i tried and therefore no one can judge me I mean, to be fair like it was also one of the first times fire emblem had attempted something like that from what i understand none of the previous right. games even put that footnote out there no not so even. i yeah. again yeah we, we want to encourage it because we want to encourage that behavior <laughs> you know right, please right. keep this up yeah exactly i mean at least they sort of listened to fan feedback mm -hmm. and tried to do something yeah. about it even if, even if it wasn't it was it was it was, bad. It it was, was bad. absolutely bad but gold <laughs> gold star for i try like we'll, we'll give them we can at least give them that yeah um, but yeah romancing was it, it was such an interesting system to put into this game because most of the other oh, yeah, right like i mean being able to explore all of those different relationships whether they were romantic or just friendship all of them felt unique right. all of them felt real to an extent at least within the game world yeah it's what made it mm -hmm. so immersive like not just being able to like actually customize your character which i enjoyed mm -hmm. that a lot but the character building between each other was like so mm -hmm. in depth it was like you couldn't not get invested absolutely in and i like too that they didn't really stray away mm -hmm. talking about grief talking about death seeing how that affected the characters Right. It, I mean, it was mm -hmm. it was war. I think they yeah. they definitely built on that in future games. Fates again. I'm gonna keep punching fates because I hate fates. But with three houses, it was so oh, bad. Oh, with but at least with three <laughs> houses, you know. That was about the closest that they got to showing how badly war can hurt someone. Like, I mean, you have characters with very clear mm -hmm. psychological reactions and ramifications because of what happens at Garrick Mach. And 
I think with Awakening, you see some of that with Ike and some of that with uh, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, but it's so heavy in Awakening in a way that was really refreshing. Yeah, yeah, they really put the paved stones down mm-hmm. for that. And then haven't exactly been able to uh, redo that or do anything similar no. to it since that point. They peaked. Yeah, sure. I mean, some of it I think has to do with the fact that Awakening was to be the last Fire Emblem game. That was their oh, Hail Mary. Was it? Yeah, so. that's true. Oh, I didn't know that. There, I remember reading an article some two years before the game released, so it must have been in like 2011 or something, where they announced that they were working on something and they said that, yeah, with the lack of success that we saw with uh, Shadow mm-hmm. Dragon and Heroes of Light and Shadow, which were the remakes of the first and the third game, they were like, yeah, if this game doesn't work, then Fire Emblem yeah. is done for good. They, uh, they were, they basically the design team and the production team went into it going, if this is going to be our last hurrah, this is going to be a hell of a last hurrah. They pulled out all the stops. So anything that they had seen in previous games, anything that they had wanted to include, but for whatever reason, you know, got shot out of production or whatever the case may be, they put into Awakening. And then Awakening was such a success that it 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 saved the franchise. It really showed. The love that's put Mm -hmm. into that game is enough to bring like tears to your eyes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like so much passion and care into ev- every absolutely. little detail. Absolutely. Now we've talked a lot about what we liked about the game, but was there anything that you would say you disliked about the game or what would you say you disliked the most? <laughs> There's something in particular, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Molly, if you had something. Yeah. Um, they have a pedophile problem. <laughs> mm, I forgot you can hook like, up the, some of the characters with their kids. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about oh, that. The, yeah. And, like, why, why in every Fire Emblem game do they insist on being like, this is a child, but she's oh, thousands no, we, of years yeah. old, so it's not a child. I forgot about child. the Dragonborn, yeah. or the, the Dragonkin. That child yeah. is, like, ten years old. Yeah. And it still super rubs me the wrong way. It's, like, not even kind of excusable, yeah. because there's nothing subtle about it. There's literally nothing tasteful about that situation. Not That's totally all. fair. Really uncomfortable. And the shitty thing is, like, if you want all of the units, you have yeah. to hook yeah. a thousand-year-old, ten-year-old yep. right. up with someone. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. Who then has yep, a child yep, yep. who looks the same age. Yeah. Right. Or slightly <laughs> yeah. younger. Like, yeah. Jesus, fuck. I mean, I, I know yeah. that that's been kind of something uncomfortable that's been with so many of the Fire Emblem games, because that's in Fates. Hardcore, that's in Fates. There's a little bit of it. I will give Three Houses yeah. credit in as far you can't romance until after... Can I can I spoil Three right. Houses? <laughs> After the time skip? Okay. So after the time skip, that's the first time that you're able to pretty much romance anyone, which I'm very grateful for. Which is good because it's like, "Mm, Uh uh-huh, you're their professor. This is not okay. At least, I mean, I know they still call you, you know, professor, (laughs) professor Violet or whatever, but at least, at least they're of age and you are of age and they're technically no longer you're their professor. I give them that credit. Yeah. The, everything before that was like, oh, this is so uncomfortable. Oh, I don't like this. Super uncomfortable. <laughs> it's definitely like the yeah. culture thing, I think, because in Japan, the age of consent is... I actually didn't realize it was that low. Oof. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that is well, a very it, dicey for, situation to be in. It's 14 with like the approval of like a guardian okay. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And with beyond that, it's 16, okay. I think. Still younger than the U.S. though. Is it eighteen? Is it eighteen or seventeen? Yep. yep. Eighteen. Okay. Eight. Eighteen. Eighteen, but sixteen gotcha. in certain states. Okay. Yeah. So super yuck on that. Yeah, it's not mm-hmm. great. That's definitely a downside with, unfortunately, a lot of JRPGs where you have like the token twelve-looking-year-old yeah. one who turns out yep. to be forty, and you're like, I that's not a thing, Japan right. or game. Like I'm, I'm fine with tropes, but mm-hmm. not that one. Yeah. <laughs> Kill it forever, please. Yeah. I would be more than happy to, see, to never see that in a Fire Emblem game again. Especially, I mean, I've been playing the the mobile game Heroes or whatever it is. Oh, yeah, Heroes. Yeah. And every time I've gotten yeah. a dragon, I'm like, you are twelve. <laughs> Or 10. I'm not sure. It's making me uncomfortable. Yep. You're in a costume intended for yep. in an adult. Like, right? There's no reason you have to be shown. Yeah. Like that that's the other thing. Like, not only is Noe mm-hmm. 10 years old, what the <laughs> fuck is she wearing? Yeah. Oh yeah. my yeah. god. I wouldn't wear that, and I'm 26. Yep. Yep. It yeah. I mean, it's Shit. like it, just when you design your characters and their clothing, just kind of making sure it's appropriate. Like it's 
it's not that hard. Right. And it's like, it's so sad because the character designs for everyone else is yep. so good. Yep. I mean, outside of like, again, without getting into Fates and other Fire Emblem games, I know our focus is on Awakening, but like considering like Camilla, for instance, from uh, Fates, who right. is my favorite character yeah. in that game. Her <laughs> costume is a problem. However, she is also an adult. Yeah. Like, she right. clearly made the choice to wear that outfit fully knowing right. what it represented in terms of like she wanted to show her sexuality and her awesomeness and like that's fine that's her decision right like she, oh, she yeah she she's got gonna it. show she got it you can't do that with a 10 year old yeah like no he no. was a big no no <laughs> no he was a no god i have it's a bit yeah <laughs> no he was a no <laughs> i mean granted if you actually if you look at fire emblem fates conquest again they pulled the same shit again oh yeah oh, absolutely yeah. yeah they, they did. also did the uh, the touching yep. characters which I, I think they removed in the american version but yeah they were they yeah. removed it internationally it's exclusive yeah we're the like japanese the, version that's what like I the bathhouse was uh where you could like we're i don't exactly remember but you could go into the bathhouse and like have an inter a direct interaction with someone which could increase your uh relationship with, with them which is fine but in the japanese version you could literally stroke their face and their shoulders with oh their stylus uh, yeah. and then when the game was released internationally Ew. they're like mm, this might not work with western audiences so they removed the feature but you can still, well, good. There's still remnants of it like if you i think you can still yeah. tap them if i remember right to like establish a connection cj do you remember yeah it's more like so you just invite them in and you're treated to that like invite them into your house is what i mean to say then you treat them you're just like talking with them to build a support or something or points towards a support but it's more in the sense of you are you're treated to seeing their character model as though you were yeah. doing the touching event but not really however if you are indeed like married to someone and you find them like asleep in your room then you get the option of of something called wake that slug a bit up. <laughs> Yeah, where either like you can blow into your oh, microphone yeah. in order to uh, about that. to gently wake them up, or you can tap <laughs> the screen violently. Huh. That sounds interesting. interesting. I guess they were trying for different <laughs> kinds of interaction, but there are far better ways to do immersion than the creepiness of of that of that factor. There really also. Are. I did want to clarify for the record: Camilla's amazing, and I meant nothing by like her outfit. Like she's she's one of the best characters in that game. So I mean, I romance. Yeah. Yeah, my she's just run a face. Awesome. I have a thing that. Although the sibling thing is she's still badass. weird with Faiths, but I realize yeah. it's talk for Classic. another time. It really is. <laughs> God, yes. I mean, honestly, in general, you could just like go on and on about Fire Emblem games and their issues yeah. with romance. Like, yep. it's a deep problem. <laughs> that whole that whole gets like quicksand. Yeah, speaking to uh, Noe as well, I guess the other big problem I had was like, yeah, all the uh, child units that you can recruit later on in the game just by making sure like people are hooked up together. Like, on the one hand, I get it. Like, if nobody appeals to you, then like, yeah, sure, go nuts with that, do whatever. However, it's always felt very very awkward to me because it's like you're putting the moves on someone else's grown ass child yep. in front of the yeah. parents. <laughs> Yep. Right, and, and like you've been like on this journey with them for so long, and then their kids come out of nowhere, and it's like, hmm, but they hot though. And it's just, I think in general, the support conversations involving the kids were just kind of clumsy and not as fleshed out and as thoughtful as the adults, like the beginning half of the game. I will say that, yeah, I can agree. And then it took what a couple different DLC episodes where they just unlock like newer conversations yeah. for every single character to actually expand on like how the kids are as opposed to like oh they live with this trauma but they all have right. their own like unique one note quirks that are admittedly just as weird but a bit more endearing because you know they're still kids yeah despite the fact that they grew up in a very war-torn environment i will say you actually just transitioned into the biggest problem i have with it which is the dlc i mm. i remember playing through a good section of the the morgan route where Morgan goes dark side and that whole situation, Grima wins. And I was really, really excited about the content because it was the first time we saw, uh, at least in Fire Emblem, like, what is the worst case scenario? And then let's bring that to be even worse. And that is what that DLC is all about. It's just, it's you failing. And I thought that was really interesting from a storytelling perspective, but the DLC itself was so difficult that I kept running into more and more problems with the gameplay 
and I where I couldn't get any further into the story, which admittedly, that might have just been the way that I approached the game. But I also think that the way that they released DLC for the game was not as efficient or as effective, especially as DLC is released now because of how expensive it was. Like that would have been like perfect for a season pass or, you know, whatever they call it these days. Right. But the DLC for the content that you got with it was disappointing in as far as it wasn't as much as I was hoping for, for a price tag that it wasn't worth. Right. I got very little of the DLC because it was just like unaffordable mm-hmm. and just like listening to other people talk about them and never seemed to Yeah, I mean it, you were honestly better off like going online to like look up summaries for the storyline right. or like watching the cutscenes on YouTube or, or whatever. Yeah. D- watch a yep, playthrough exactly because yeah. it just i mean each dlc was anywhere from like 12, 10 to 15 dollars and that was per episode so you know to get the right full set. exactly per episode that was yeah ridiculous. i mean the base game only costs like 50 dollars i think at the time or 60 maybe I, i'm not sure when price hike yeah. happened with video games i think for 3ds games even all throughout the 3ds's life they were still a uh, 40 the only games that were 50 were any that were produced oh okay Atlas. so like the persona stuff for the yeah shin megami any anything like like Etri and Odyssey, Shin Megami Tensei, okay. stuff like that. I mean, even with that in mind, like in order to get all of the DLC, you were paying basically four times what the original game cost. And it was like, I understand, you know, obviously I want to pay for DLC. I want to support the developers. I want to see more and I want to encourage this, but not for those price tags. So that was one of my issues with it. <laughs> no, I'm completely with you. And I will admit, I did buy all of the DLC for Fire Emblem Awakening because it's like, oh, this is new territory. Let's see what they add. And even despite me buying all of it, I was still under the impression of seeing as both of you, I was like, yeah, this isn't exactly what it's cracked up to be. So I just dropped it. But like, there's a part of me that still wants to go on to complete the uh, future past, like apocalyptic mm-hmm. DLC. But no matter how hard I min max my characters, I still can't fucking yeah, beat that I can't first either. episode. Yeah, it's, it's that I mean, the, hard. I think the yeah. biggest problem is that you're, especially in terms of the way that the map is set up, you are set up to fail from the beginning, which would be an interesting concept if that's what they were going for. Like, I think it would actually be really interesting if you were meant to lose that first fight and then the idea would be that you know you're captured now you have to escape again or something like that to give it more story relevance for why it's so difficult but Mm -hmm. at least with the way that they approached most of the dlc for awakening is it was like new maps or new it was more about like the new gameplay content than it was about the new story, even though it was heavy sto- heavily story based. Yeah. And me being disappointed with all that, that really led me to reconsider purchasing everything as far as Fates was concerned and uh, Echo Shadows of Valentia. I maybe went like really selective with those only. Although when it came to Three Houses, I was just like, you know what? I've been like selective long enough. Plus that if I get the season pass, the stuff will already get mm-hmm. added to me anyway. So why not? just give that a whirl and see what happened but that's a conversation for (laughs) another episode coming out of awakening what would you say was your biggest takeaway it can be anything from how it influences you how you think about the series or like other games that try to emulate that success or what you'll think about for a long time to come i think that the storytelling and just the emotional depth of it really affects how I go into other Mm. video games. It's like getting to the end of that game it felt like getting to the end of like a three-part movie series or like a novel that is just like so incredible that when you close it you're like, what am I gonna do Mm -hmm. now? It it was just so absorbent and extensive that now in the back of my head, I think low-key, I compare the storytelling of other games to the this game. Absolutely agree. Mm-hmm. I mean, there have only been a handful of games I can think of off the top of my head that have left me with such an impression and such satisfaction as Awakening did. And I think the biggest thing that stood out to me even now is the final choice that you make as Robin. Yeah. Because even though you mm-hmm. really don't see much of the fallout of or like the the resolution of what happens after you make that choice. Um, you, you see Grima fall, and then you know one of two things conceivably happens in the future. What I loved about the way that it approached it is it was it was very much your decision as Robin. Like you felt the weight of that decision on you as your companions are getting torn apart by Grima and Grima's minions. And I think too that like what is suggested beyond happening if you choose the route of not dying but 
having Krom kill Grima, and then, you know, vice versa, if you choose to kill Grima and therefore destroy yourself, the weight of that decision is so poignant without it being overbearing. They never delve into like, oh, how could you? This is a horrible thing. How could you sacrifice, you know, the rest of the world for your own safety or your own sake? That none of that happens. There's very much this feeling of, we don't want you to do this. We don't want you to, to fall to this just because you happen to be tied to this God. But at the same time, we would sacrifice ourselves. We as the shepherds are here to protect you know, the rest of this world. You are one of us. We understand your decision. Like Just the level of respect between the characters and, and that final decision point still gets me every single time. Absolutely. The result of the choice was never as important or poignant as having to make the choice in the Absolutely. first place. I can say, I think for me, it was how Awakening was the catalyst that influenced the series for years to come because we are now three more games deep and a mobile game since that game came out. And you see a lot of the conventions that Fates has brought about that have really manifested themselves fairly heavily, I will say, into some of the other games, like revamping how the mm -hmm. supports work and how you can go about just getting two people together for like any reason, like doesn't necessarily have mm -hmm. to be romantic, but more for a sense of, well, I think you kind of get what I'm trying to say. There's also this sense of, like, I still find it funny that ever since the uh, heart sound effect came about, an awakening when you do stuff with characters or two characters paired together or two characters standing next to each other you come out of a battle and you just see the heart. I just find it amazing that that specific heart and that specific sound effect have persisted across like Fire Emblem Warriors, <laughs> Fire Emblem Heroes, Fire Emblem yeah. Fates, Echo Shadows of Valentia, yeah. Three Houses, like all those games. And not, not only that, like this being the, the game, I would say that either revitalized the series or revived the series, it definitely set the tone of what's to come where it's like you have characters that have their own quirks however like in depth they try to go or however one note they truly are you definitely have a lot of moments where you can see in all of the games that came after just how heavily influenced they were from the conventions that awakening set yeah absolutely yeah i mean without awakening literally there would be no additional fire emblem games but also in a very real sense the design and the choices that went into that game where they chose to pull out all the stops where they chose to approach it from uh, both a, a familiar tone from you know previous Fire Emblem games to some very new ideas or at least newer ideas. Without those we would not have three houses we wouldn't have had the issues or triumphs depending on how you look at it with fates but i think also too because awakening was such a success and awakening made such good or i should say the designers made such good choices with awakening i mean it opened the floodgates to other crossovers it made sure the series would survive beyond just what we understand fire emblem to be um as you'd said cj you know the mobile game is out there fire emblem warriors uh would not exist without awakening kind of opening the gates to say there is still, you know, a very deep love of this series. We just needed to find the new path to move forward with it. I completely agree with that. Are there any aspects about this game, positive or negative, that you wish would return in a future Fire Emblem title? Ooh, all of it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's such a hard question because it's Fire Emblem Awakening just set the bar so high. It was so intentional and so thoughtful. The gameplay was innovative and just like so intelligent. Mm -hmm. I it's it's like you, I don't know if you if they can if they can get that high again. I mean, I would love to see you know there there are obviously flaws in the game. We would love to see the removal of some of the sexualization of the younger characters. I, I would love to see updates made to gender and to you know mm. the romance options that are available for the main character and for the other characters. But I think to it's almost like that phrase "lightning never strikes twice in the same place," which as far as I know, not true. But as far <laughs> as it goes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is that Fire Emblem Awakening happened when it needed to happen. It was that perfect storm. You know, they, I don't know if they could recreate that without it feeling false. Right. Having right. said that, oh, they sorry, go ahead. Molly. Oh, it was just there was so much pressure mm -hmm. and like a lot weighing on them. And I think if they wanted to like recreate the kind of response they got from Awakening, they would have to go in again with that much intention and that much care instead of just like, oh, Awakening was so popular, we got to get another Fire Emblem title out. Which is exactly that. what Fates was. Right, exactly. They, it just needs, they need to put in the amount of 
thought and love that went into Awakening. I think Three Houses was a good kind of follow up to that because I mean the only thing that really yeah. Three Houses took from Fates was the well it took two things technically because you had your base of operations which Three Houses had with far more depth and then you had the path choices but at least in Three Houses they were really really good and Fates they were garbage. With Awakening I would <laughs> love to see an Awakening where if they decided to you know re-release it or whatever I would love to see it where there are more choices, particularly the choice to join or not join Grima would be fascinating from a player perspective. I would love to see that because oh, that would oh, go man. about as dark as I think Fire Emblem has ever gone. I mean, Three Houses went some places that I was like, oh my gosh, was not expecting that. But I think that would take the game to just a whole new level of seriousness that outside of, again, kind of Dimitri's path with Three Houses or Edelgards or Claude's actually, all of them, we really haven't seen in the same way. Because especially because that puts the player character in that position of like, I am the destructor of the world. <laughs> I can completely agree with that. I guess for me, I would, my answer may be not as in-depth as you two's, but I would say, please bring back Awakening's pair-up system. Mm, yes! Yeah. I really, really miss that in the, I was just so disappointed that it wasn't integrated in the other game because it worked so mm -hmm. well. I actually completely forgot that it wasn't in three houses <laughs> Yeah. It's so ingrained in the series because of Awakening. Yeah, I was I was super bummed out about that, specifically because a lot of my strategies would sometimes revolve around like being able to pair up characters with Pegasus oh, yeah. Knight um, and move them around oh, that yeah. way. And why did they not bring that back? Well, I think it's interesting because it's in Warriors. <laughs> it's in Fire Emblem Warriors. Which, you know, is the side game of, you know, kill a bajillion guys in one go. <laughs> and I, I have to say, it, I've put almost 300 hours, I think, into that game. I love that game. Yeah, oh, damn. It is one of my favorite Fire Emblem games. But a lot of it is because of the, the Awakening influence. Because the storyline that they pull into it from Awakening is excellent. But either way, I mean, the, the idea that that concept still has lived on this many years later and has shown up in at least a side game, I think is indicative of, like, the designers realize that there's a reason we like that, not only from a strategic or from a like a, a character bonding perspective, but from a strategic standpoint, it opened up the possibilities in some ways uh, for rescuing yeah. units, for you know, get, getting out of some right. really tough situations. It it really changed the strategic mm -hmm. nature. Absolutely, of it. I will say like Fates did try its own version of the of the pair up system. Granted, it was a little weirder, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Fates was just a weirder game. <laughs> Whereas like. <laughs> yeah, and we will talk about that more in a future episode. Because I know there's a, there's a lot to alone like, there. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that have their grievances against Fates, and I know like one guy that absolutely loves really? Fates despite its flaws simply because simply because Soleil oh, is right. a character in it. <laughs> but with that being said, uh, that's all the time we have. But before we close out, do either of you have anything you want to plug or shout out before we finish up? Uh, no. No, uh, just a, you know, a thank you for letting us uh, chat about one of the best games out there. And, you know, oh, uh, yeah. you're nope. a great host. Fire Emblem is a oh, masterpiece. Yes, thank you. Everyone play Fire Emblem Awakening. Let's plug Fire Emblem Awakening. Like seven <laughs> years later. I might go. Um, I'm inspired to like uh -huh. restart another <laughs> another playthrough. You know, oh. I think I've got my 3DS charged. That sounds like a real good idea. I got to go back to my second playthrough because I looked at it. Maybe I tried going back to it for like the past couple days. I'm at like chapter six on my second playthrough, and my preferred romantic partner in that, because I'm a female avatar, is a uh, Lanku. Nice. Oh, love and him. And I'm just like, I cannot get through this this one chapter like yeah why? i tried playing it on hard mode and almost burst into tears because i just couldn't i was like this is the first map how can i not get through the first map i don't understand yeah i gotta say i truly commend all the people who um can play through uh -uh. lunatic and lunatic plus difficulties nope. yeah. with a straight face and not well, that, have a panic i mean that attack. actually right. brings oh, like sorry. i'm gonna throw some yeah. shit I mean, I'm gonna break stuff. I'm gonna break my <laughs> DS given enough time. Yeah. Um, I will say one final note about something that we would want to see and we continue to see is 
that idea of choosing casual mode versus final, or I, I forget what, what it's called, but ca classic. yeah, classic versus casual, because Awakening opened the floodgates for every player that was scared of playing a Fire Emblem game in fear of losing yes. units. Mm -hmm. That yeah. game was where that originated. And I mean, now with the ability to like rewind time in free houses, and I think Fates had some kind of choice system as well, where you could do either classic or casual, we wouldn't have the Fire Emblem base fan base we have now without that option. Right. Yeah. I dare say we also wouldn't have like smack like people that live or die by Smash Brothers like breathing hatred about anime sword fighters without awakening either. I will say it always amazed me how many of the Fire Emblem characters made it into Smash Brothers that no one knew who they were. Between Marth and yeah, Roy. They yeah. picked some of the yeah. weirdest like, ones. Like pick okay, at least pick Why right, those guys? Like <laughs> Ellawood or like Lynn or Characters that yeah. like both <laughs> Eastern and Western sides of the equation would recognize, you know? So uh, weird. <laughs> Super Smash Brothers, I'm sure, is a whole other <laughs> category, CJ, for you. Yeah, that's going to be in a few <laughs> weeks. Oh, fun little fun fact before we go. In Super Smash Brothers Melee, which is when Marth and Roy were introduced to overseas audiences, Roy actually was not supposed to be in the game. He was supposed to be replaced by Leaf, the protagonist of really? 776. Huh. Really? However, Sakurai picked Roy because it was like, okay, Binding Blade is almost out in Japan. Let's put Roy in the game to like help promote, promote Binding okay. Blade sales. And he did the same thing when he added a Corrin from Fates into DLC oh, for Smash no. for Wii U and 3DS. Uh, Corrin. <laughs> That's so tacky. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it works. It's a good marketing play. I suppose as long as they... If, I mean, Sam. I mean, Well, I mean, if you figure to, like, no matter what, those characters probably would have ended up in the game in some way, shape, or form, whether that's as a trophy or as a the sub-help yeah. thingies that you can use that I don't remember the name of. It, it's... Yeah, but why create a whole nother vanilla playable <laughs> that's character? Fair. Like, that's come fair. on. It's <laughs> like, can you pick somebody else from, from uh, Fates? Like, promote it via a character that is actually likable and not Corum. Right? Not, not Corum. I mean, is anyone in that cast even likable? Camilla! That question will be answered on time. Okay, okay. okay. At least. Up, oh, yeah, answered it already. So, CJ, you yeah. don't even have to do a I mean, Fates I, episode. Now you I got mean, us. I, I mean, I would have gone with Azura, Ooh, okay, but okay. sure, let's go okay. with that. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you that. Okay, well. It could well, be a color, colorful debate Yeah, for later. absolutely. For sure, yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you both for being here and Yeah, our pleasure. Yeah, well, absolutely. Awesome. Delightful. Yeah, to all the listeners, thank you guys for being here and tuning in, and that's our show. Tune in next time where we talk about the Banjo-Kazooie franchise. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Kat and Molly, for participating. Everyone take